Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook facebook.com slash radio detectives. I do want to remind you that we have great detectives of old time radio t-shirts available. You can get them in the standard great detectives design over at t-shirt.greatdetectives.net or our Johnny Dollar 70th anniversary t-shirt at yours truly.greatdetectives.net and our Joe Friday never said just the facts ma'am t-shirt at friday.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, the original air date, August the 15th of 1951, and the title is The Lucky Costa Matter. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Louise Costa. Oh, Louise. Say, that's funny. I was thinking of you and Lucky just this morning. Were you? Yeah, how are you? I don't know, Johnny. That's why I called you. What's the matter, Louise? Something about Lucky? I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm getting tired of being a detective's wife. Hey, wait a minute. That doesn't sound like you. I know, but something's wrong. He's been on a case and he had to go to San Francisco, or at least that's what he told me. I haven't had one word, not even a postcard in a week. That doesn't sound like Lucky. Maybe he's in trouble. The divorce case, Johnny. Could I talk to you about it? Maybe I'm all wrong, but I'd like to know. Yeah, sure, Louise. I'll be over in about an hour, if that's all right. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. For refreshment while you work, for enjoyment anytime, chew a stick of Wrigley Spearmint Gum. The delicious, long-lasting, real mint flavor of Wrigley Spearmint cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The good, smooth chewing helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So indoors, outdoors, at work or play, enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint gum. Wrigley Spearmint. Refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to New York Police Department Attention Homicide Bureau. I know way. I expect you to honor this statement, but for the sake of convenience, I'll use my regular report form. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Lucky Costa matter. His real name was Frank Costa. I don't know where he picked up the Lucky tag, but he'd had it five years ago when both of us were on the payroll of one of the big detective agencies. He opened his own office at about the same time I went into insurance. I got to know him and his wife well, but not intimately, and I liked them both. So when she phoned with worry in her voice, I went over to see her. In a way, I wish I hadn't. Now that you're here, darling, you're kind of silly and embarrassed. Well, you don't have to talk about anything you don't want to, Louise. Why don't we go to dinner and a movie and forget the detective racket for a while? That doesn't work. I've tried it. Johnny, it's not only this week that I haven't heard from you. Lucky's changed. How? It's nothing I can explain to you. If you'd seen him every day, you probably wouldn't have noticed anything, but it's something that a wife could see. thing with his eyes when he didn't know I was looking at him. Sort of a far away, as if he was thinking of something that I didn't have any business knowing about. And you know Lucky's never been like that. Well, I guess any man keeps secrets when it's his job to. Well, Lucky never has with me. He didn't need to. As far as his job went, he's always told me that it did him good to come home and talk things over with me. Even things he really wasn't supposed to talk about. It hasn't been that. You think he's mixed up with another woman, don't you? It started over a month ago, Johnny. I've been used to Lucky being away. You know that. Yeah, I guess you'd have to be. But like I said, I... I knew when things got different when... Well, 
when it was more than just being away from me. You sure you aren't imagining things? I'm not imagining, but I haven't heard from him in all this time. That never happened before. Mm. How long has this been going on, this change you speak of? I tried to remember exactly when I first noticed it. I I think it was one night about a month ago. I asked him what he was thinking about, and he sort of came to and said something that I don't remember now. Did you press it any further? A couple of times, and then I didn't anymore. Because it made me think he was hiding something from me. I didn't want to think that. I kept telling myself that everything was all right. But now I know it wasn't. Was he on a case a month ago? He was tracing some phonies. It doesn't have anything to do with work, Johnny. I know that. He'd traced phonies before. He'd done everything before. It wasn't work. Well, I don't have a wife's viewpoint, but I know Lucky pretty well. Some things about him I know better than you do. It seems to me that if he was going to go wrong with a woman, he'd have done it a long time ago. We met some, you know. Yes, I've heard. Does his brother still live here in town? Yes, but I haven't phoned him. Same address on Broad, wasn't it? Yeah. Are you going to see him? Yeah, I thought I might. You want me to check on Lucky, don't you? I don't know what I want. Yes, I want to find out. All right. I think his brother is the best place to start. Last time I'd been at the Broad Street address had been for the funeral of the Costa's mother. The house was a few years more beat up than it had been. Some old chicken coops stood empty in the backyard, and Joe, the brother, pulled up in an old car after I'd thumbed the doorbell three or four times and had started to leave. I took the wife and kids over to the park. So I could have some peace for an hour or so. Yeah, I almost missed you. Well, I'm glad you didn't, Johnny. It's been a long time. How have things been going with you? Fair, Joe. You? Ah, uh, guy can make a living. But making it go far enough is another story. Hey, come in the house. Sure, thanks. I'm working over at Brickers now. It's a better spot than the old job. Had one raise already and got another one coming up. Man, that sounds good, Joe. You still doing the same thing? Yeah, I'm still following people. You, uh... See much of Lucky anymore? No, no, not for six months anyway. As a matter of fact, I came here to talk to you about him. Yeah? What about him? Well, I wondered if you'd spoken to him before he left for San Francisco last week. No. I talked to Lucky for the last time, as far as I'm concerned. That was about a month ago. What's the matter? Thought you two were okay, that you got along all right. You're a pretty good friend of his, aren't you, Johnny? Well, you know how it was. He and I just fell together when we were with the agency. Yeah, we're good friends. Maybe I see him only twice a year, but he's almost the only guy I've held on to. Did he ever tell you about his first wife? He was married before? Yeah. Did he ever tell you about the year and six he spent in prison? Joe, are you serious? Yeah. That's the way lucky he is. He don't let his friends know anything about him that he don't want them to know. He's always been like that. There's always been two sides to Joe. One that you know about and one that you don't. What about this prison term? It was grand theft. It was over this girl that he married, his first wife. He stole some furs for her. How long ago? Uh, Twelve, fifteen years, I guess. Well, we're still living in Brooklyn. Lucky was a wild kid when he was 18 or so, and he still got some of it in him. Who was this woman he married? Her name was Hazel Mackey, and she called me about getting in touch with Lucky. Oh? Uh-huh. When? That was about a month ago. That's when him and me had our showdown. I told him he was a dumb cluck if he saw Hazel again. I said, you got a new wife now. You're a morning or something. You're married to a nice kid. But I could tell I wasn't getting to him. He was going to see her. I knew that. So I told him if he did, it was the end of him and me, brother or no brother. You were sure he saw her? Well, before he left that he would. She had some kind of a hold on him back when they were married. And she still got it. What do you want with Lucky, Johnny? Louise called me. She hasn't heard from him in a week, and she wants to know what goes. He's dropped out of sight. Sure he has. I knew he would. Where can I find this Hazel? New York. She's got an apartment on 82nd. You got the number? Uh, yeah. Come on in the other room. I'll get it for you. Is Hazel Mackey? Yeah. Who are you? My name is Dollar. I'm a friend of Lucky Costas. Oh, come on in. Thanks. 
You know where Lucky is? Not at the moment, no. Who are you? I told you, he's been missing for a week. His family is worried. I'm looking for him. He's on a case. Is he working for you? Yes. What kind of a case? I don't know that it's any of your business. I need a detective, so I hired him. Is that all right? It would be if he were on the up and up about it, but he isn't. As far as his wife knows, he's in San Francisco on a divorce case. I can't help what he tells his wife. How did you get here? His brother told me about you. I guess his wife doesn't know. I guess that's why he told her he was going to San Francisco. You know where I can reach him? No, not for a while. Do you think I ought to send his wife to the police? I don't see why you should. I will if I don't find out about the case he's on. Hey, what's with this pressure stuff? What's the case? I needed a bodyguard. What for? I was engaged to a guy who was sent to prison. He was there two years, and I... I changed my mind about him. He's out now, and I'm afraid of him. Who is he? You know I don't like you. you got a lot of nerve. None of this is any of your business. I wish you were right, but I've already stuck my neck out and made it my business. So if I don't find out these things from you, I'll find them out from someone else. Yeah. Yes, you would. His name is George Myers. What makes you think he's going to cause you any trouble? Some of the things he told me when I went to visit him. It's hard to talk sense to a man who's been in prison that long. I tried to tell him how I felt, but he blow his top and make a lot of threats. Where is he now? I don't know. I've been out a week. And Lucky's trying to get a line on him. He hasn't contacted you yet? No, but he will. When it's over with and we get things straightened out, why... Then Lucky can go back to his wife. Now, if you approve, I'd just as soon you'd get out of here. No, a few things don't figure. You answered the door, buzzer, not like a dame that's afraid of someone coming, but I suppose you're right. It's Lucky's business how he earns his money. I'll tell him you dropped in. It's up to you. Good night. So long. I put off telling his wife for two days because I didn't know how and because I didn't think it was up to me to tell a thing she never knew about her husband. But on the third morning, it broke. The story made page one, part two of all the New York dailies. The body of ex-convict George Myers had been found the night before. He'd been shot to death by what they called an unknown assailant. I phoned the brother, Joe Costa, and met him outside Bricker's during his lunch hour. Hi, Johnny. What's up? Well, maybe the local papers didn't carry it here. This one. What about it? Who's this Myers? Friend of Hazel Mackey's. She told me she hired Lucky to bodyguard her against this Myers. Holy. You mean Lucky killed him? I don't know, Joe. But it looks bad. Here, yeah. read this last paragraph. Myers went to prison on a robbery rap, but the money was never recovered. There's $200,000 floating around, Joe. I can't help wondering if this Mackey woman hadn't her finger on it. Why do you have to tell me this, Johnny? Because I couldn't carry it myself. I talked to Hazel. What she told me put the finger on Lucky. I wanted you to know because I'm going to have to go to the police with it. This is going to kill Louise. You know that. What can I do, Joe? Well, it seems to me you could stop playing hero. Now, wait, Joe. You don't have to run to the police. If Lucky did it, let them find out. You don't have to tell Joe. them. Not for that no good Lucky, but Joe, the police. Joe, listen to me. If they get to Hazel Mackey and she tells them about talking to me, then what happens? Then I'm in trouble. I can't afford that, Joe. I've got to stay clean with the police. Sure, stay clean, no matter what it does to Louise. That's the way it is, then, huh? I didn't ask to get mixed up in it. I didn't tell Louise what I found out about him, but it's out of hand now, Joe, and there's nothing I can do. Go ahead, then. Go ahead. Maybe some nice fat cop will pat you on the back. Joe! Joe! Uh, it's a sour racket. For refreshment while you work, for enjoyment any time, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. When your mouth feels dry, when you're warm or tired, Wrigley's Spearmint is really refreshing. The lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift, helps you feel your best and do your best. So for chewing enjoyment plus pleasant refreshment, chew delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we bring you the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I left Hart 
Hartford for New York on the 110 that afternoon. When I got there, the later editions reported the usual rounding up of known criminals who were being grilled about the Maya shooting. And the closer I got to the apartment on 82nd Street, the rottener the whole thing looked to me. Who is... Oh. Come on, open up. All right. What do you want? Where is he now? Lucky? I don't know. I told him to give himself up, but he wouldn't. Did he kill George Myers? Yes, the stupid idiot. How did it happen? Lucky had a room over at the Montclair, and George must have followed me over there. You went across town so you could be with your bodyguard? Yes. And the man you were afraid of followed you? Yes. You were either not very bright or not very scared. Go ahead. Well, about two o'clock we came out, and... George was waiting in the lobby. He followed us out on the street and started swearing at us. He took a swing at me, and then Lucky tried to stop him. He pulled a gun out of his pocket, and that's when Lucky shot him. That all sounds very neat. What do you mean? Sit down. I've got a theory that I'll try out on you. When I get close, tell me. The $200,000 that never showed up after George Meyer's arrest... For a split of that, Lucky agreed to kill him. You're crazy. You hire a detective as a bodyguard. Theoretically, he could kill this man you were afraid of and ride out of it on his license and the self-defense plea. It was self-defense. George pulled a gun. The police didn't find it. If it was self-defense, why didn't Lucky report it like he should have? I wanted him to. We came back here and I begged him to phone the police. What about the $200,000? I don't know anything about it. You mean it'll be hard to prove that you do? I said I don't know. I take it you haven't phoned the police. Uh, no. I know I should, but I just can't do it to Lucky. You know, I'm going to call them, don't you? I thought you said you were his friend. Not that good a friend. Oh, what can they do to me? Hold you as a material witness while I try to get some proof together that you dragged Lucky into this. Dragged him into it? I hired him. I told you that. I was afraid of George, and, and I hired him. And he killed Myers in line of duty and in self-defense. Why didn't he turn himself in? I don't know. I wanted him to. You must have given him some reason for not doing it. What did he say? Well, he, he said that... Everything was all ruined now and that he'd rather take a chance on getting away. Why was it ruined if he killed in self-defense? I've had to do it. I don't know. Were you going to help him get away? We didn't talk about that. He was like a crazy man, pacing the floor. And, and then he left about 3.30. Where was he going? He didn't say. Was he going to get in touch with you? Yes. He said he'd try to call. Well, he won't be here to take the call. I want the police to hear your story. The officer who answered my call was Lieutenant Carl Belder. Two uniformed men who were with him took Hazel Mackey back to headquarters, and he listened to my theory. We searched the apartment without finding proof of her holding any amount like $200,000. She had a small savings account, a small checking account, and a stub showed that she had paid Lucky Costa a week in advance. We waited the rest of the afternoon for Lucky to call, and he finally did an hour or so after dark. Go ahead, Dollar. That might be him. Johnny Dollar. Who? Is this Lucky? This is Johnny Dollar. Don't hang up, Lucky. Why should I hang up? Hiya, Johnny. I'm all right, Lucky. How are you? Fine, fine. Yeah, I can imagine. What was the matter with you? I don't have the slightest idea what you're talking about. How about you explaining yourself? What are you doing in my girl's apartment? She's not lonesome. She's down visiting New York's finest. Why don't you use your head and come on in, Lucky? <laughs> you kidding? I like it where I am. You still figuring on trying to run out? Sure, it's worth a chance, don't you think, Johnny? If you killed Myers in self-defense, why don't you play it that way? You having this call trace, Johnny? I hope we wouldn't have to play games like that. I thought if I could talk to you, you'd come to your senses. Can I meet you someplace where we can talk it over? <laughs> no, thanks. You're a good guy, Johnny, but I think you might sell me out. You've already been sold out. What's the matter with you? You know, if positions were reversed, I'd give you a hand. I wouldn't ask you to. Anybody gets himself in a mess like you're in shouldn't expect help. Now use your head, Lucky. Let's get this over with. <laughs> sure. Sure, I'll meet you in Times Square. New Year's Eve, Johnny. Lucky? Ah. Uh, Gone. You know him better than I do, but uh, don't you think you pressed him a little too hard? Wouldn't he have believed you if you talked like you were going to help him? 
No, he knows me better than that. Well, it's a tough spot, Dollar. An old friend like that. Well, he's still in New York. He won't get out now, will he? Well, everything should be covered by now. Um, uh, do you know him well enough to guess what he'll try? I don't think so, because a killer isn't the guy I knew. His clothes are still in the hotel room. I don't think he'll try for them now. He's got about $200 in his pocket. I don't have any idea what he'll try, Lieutenant. I guess all we can do is wait. An officer was posted at the apartment, and Lieutenant Belder and I went down to headquarters. Under steady questioning, Hazel Mackey held to her story that she knew nothing about any $200,000, that she'd been afraid of George Myers, that she'd hired a detective in good faith to protect her, and that after Myers had been killed, she had pleaded with Costa to give himself up. It seemed apparent to me then, after having talked with him, that she had her statement well rehearsed and felt that if she stuck to it, there was no way for us to prove anything else. I stayed in New York that night and the next, waiting for something to break. When it came, it came from Hartford. Joe Costa wanted to see me as soon as possible. Johnny? Yeah, Joe. Come on in. Oh, I got here as fast as I could. How's Louise? Not very good. Sit down. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about blowing up the other day, Sorry. Right. I didn't blame you. It was a bad time for both of us. You were right, Johnny. All I could think of then was he's my brother. But now it don't make any difference. He's no better than a rat that you got a trap. There's nothing to do but stop him. You're right, Joe. I had to quit my job over him. I couldn't take it the way the boys were looking at me. They wouldn't talk to me. It'll smooth over. What do you want to talk to me about, Joe? Has he contacted you? Yeah, he phoned me. He wants for me to give him some money so he can get away. He needs more than money now. He'll never get out. What'd you tell him? Well, I told him I didn't have any to give him. And that was a time I knew for sure that you were right about him. So when he asked me again, I told him I'd see what I could do about raising some. I told him to call back tonight. I... I did that so I could sell him out to you. It was the right thing to do, no matter what you think. He wouldn't think twice about pulling you into this mess, Joe. And that's what he did. He asked you to be a party to the killing. Yeah, I know that. When is he going to call? Sometime after 7 o'clock. Does he want you to meet him? Yeah, that's right. With 200 bucks. He's going to tell me where when he calls. He's still in New York, isn't he? Yeah, in Manhattan. You want me to talk to him? Yeah, if he gives himself up, I, I kind of figure they might take it easier on him. It could be. That's a deal, Joe. I'll talk to him. I'd like to see him go in by himself. Well, you uh, want a glass of wine while we wait, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. This is some new stuff for my wife's folks. I took her and the kids up to their house to stay till this blows over. You think we were all criminals the way people treat us in this town? <laughs> came in about 8.30. The meeting place was a flat near the Bowery. The time was about 10 the following night. I was there at five minutes after. Hi, Lucky. Well, what's this? Let me in. Nice place you got. You like it better than a home with a wife? Shut up. Joe sold me out, huh? He gave you a break. He didn't call the police. He sent me some money? No. You think you had any right to ask him to? I need some dough, Johnny. I'm running short. What about your girlfriend? You can shut up about that, too. A double cross, Lucky, huh? Yeah. Yeah, a double cross. A real good one. <laughs> I got no beef coming. You gonna let Hazel get away with it? Not worth a murder rap to square with her. You know who set up the double cross for? Who? You did, Johnny. 
She stumbled into this thing and set it up for her. Maybe she'll send me a gold watch. I saw her three days before you killed him, Lucky. If you knew I stumbled in, why didn't you pull out? She didn't tell me about you until after I killed him. Oh, that's the way it went. Yeah. One little thing Hazel forgot. And she hoped it wasn't important. She hadn't wanted to bother me with it. But a friend of mine acted like he was suspicious of what we were doing. All it did was blow the whole thing sky high. I was going to cop a self-defense plea, but... Were you around, sniffing out the premeditation, I didn't have a chance. That's tough, Lucky. I'm sorry it didn't work out for you. Get off, will you? I came into this with my eyes open. I know what kind of an operator she was. I'm not beefing. There was a chance to make a hundred grand, so I took the jump, so I lost. What now, Lucky? I was going to ask you. You want a drink? No, thanks. You want a drink with me, huh? Not right now, Lucky. Thank <laughs> you. Afraid I'll slip you a Mickey? I wouldn't put it past you if I was in your way. And you are in my way. Aren't you, John? Everybody's in your way now. The whole world. You can't make it, Lucky. You won't get out of town. How much you got says I won't? Start making sense. You've been on the right side of enough of these things to know you're finished right now. No, I'm not. I want you to get a shirt and tie on, make yourself look halfway human, and go to headquarters with me. They may give you a break if you give yourself up. Save it. Quit talking about it. What are you going to do? I'm not sure now that Joe sold me out. I'm in a bad spot, Johnny. I know that. I'm not ready to quit yet. Joe didn't sell you out. He wanted to give you a chance to give yourself up just like I do. We're still your friends, Lucky. We can't stand by you if you won't do the right thing. Then I'll go it alone. When? What do you mean by that? What do you think I'm going to do, Lucky? Sit here with you until you get ready to leave? I sort of hope you would. It would make it easier if you did. Well, I can't. I came here to give you a break. I've made my offer. Come with me. Give yourself up. Oh, I can't do that. Well, then I'm leaving. I'm telling the first cop I see to come and get you. You're going to put a gun on me, Lucky? Yeah. I can't let you leave. And you'll have to use it. You want me to come up a coward in front of an old friend like you? I'm sorry, Johnny. You got nothing to lose? You won't get blamed if I get out of here. I can't let you, Lucky. I'm not bluffing. I'll have to see. I'm leaving. I'll ask you once more to go with me. Don't try it, Johnny. I'll kill you if you start for the door. That's your privilege, Lucky, because you're already a killer. Johnny. Yeah? I'm telling you, don't. Johnny, I'm telling you. Johnny, I told you. Well, Dollar? He won't give up, Lieutenant. Well, we'll take him then. He's armed and he's drunk. But take it easy on him if you can. He could have killed me, and he didn't. confession as set down in this report is worthless as evidence, and as far as proof goes, you are still unable to charge Hazel Mackey for her part of the conspiracy. But after Frank Costa died trying to fight his way out of the flat, I want to suggest that she be picked up again and grilled until she breaks. She's as guilty as he was. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, for refreshment while you work, for enjoyment any time, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. There's lots of lively, real mint flavor in it to cool your mouth, freshen your taste, and sweeten your breath. And chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, at work or play, always keep delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. For refreshment while you work, for enjoyment any time, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Gum, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Edmund O'Brien can now be seen starring in the Paramount Pictures production, Warpath.
Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Gloria Blondell, High Averback, Peter Leeds, and Sidney Miller. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum every day. We invite you to join us next week at this same time when from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another adventure of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. Welcome back. Well, this is a uh, familiar theme for uh, Johnny Dollar. I'm kind of surprised they didn't do more of these in the O'Brien era because I I tend to remember more of these from uh, the Bailey and even the Lund era when Johnny is dealing with a friend or former colleague who has gone uh, rotten. And I think in this particular episode, just because O'Brien's take on Johnny Dollar tends to be so downbeat to begin with, there's definitely a big weight to this as he is dealing with his friend's uh, betrayal. And I think it makes for an interesting dynamic that unlike some of the later betrayals when uh, the person who has gone bad is so far gone that they are really ready to kill Johnny, that Lucky wasn't. And uh, there's also this sense where uh, Johnny just tried so hard to find a way to... Uh, save him or give him an opportunity to mitigate what he had done. But throughout, he's bound not only by his professional obligations and his needs to stay on the right side of the law, but by his own code of honor and driven by the anger that Lucky violated all of that. Well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Shauna, Patreon supporter since June of 2019 supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for The Silent Men, and we'll be back next Friday with another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. In the meantime, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and uh, give us a call, 208-991-4783. Uh, but from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.